All right, happy Father's Day and welcome to Vantage Point Church. Hey, my name is Mark Lee. I'm the lead pastor here at Vantage Point Church and I got a special Father's Day present for you today and that we are proud to announce a tentative date for in-person gatherings. Right now, we just don't have a place to meet. Schools aren't open, we're not done with construction yet, but construction will be done at the end of July. And so I'm proud to announce that as much as we know right now that our first in-person gathering is gonna be right here at 8500 Archibald on Sunday, August 2nd. Come on, I need somebody to pop up an emoji. I need somebody to say amen. I need somebody to go crazy right now. Man, it is going to be such a great day. And I just have two promises for you about that day. Number one, it's gonna be sanitized. Don't worry, we're gonna clean, clean, clean. Number two, it is gonna be spectacular. So I hope to see you here. I wanna start out with a little Father's Day story that once upon a time there was a prince who was in love with a beautiful princess and he asked that princess to marry him and the princess said no. And so the prince lived happily ever after because every single day after that the prince went and rode his motorcycles and his four wheelers. He had poker nights and Call of Duty marathons. He drank Bud Light inside the house and smoked cigars without anybody telling him that he couldn't do it. He lived every day like he was Ferris Bueller. He scratched himself wherever he wanted to and he left the toilet seat up every single day. The end. Isn't that a great story? Isn't that a funny story? I know that my boys are laughing right now, but you know why they're laughing? Because they're boys. And what you have to understand is that I don't have a problem necessarily with any of those things. Like I love classic cars and I love poker nights and I probably leave the toilet seat up a little bit too often which my life which my wife is not that crazy about I don't have a problem with any of those things necessarily I just have a problem with the males that I know that glorify those traits as the supreme aspect of manhood like is that what manhood is really all about that I would play poker and smoke cigars and drink alcohol See, what we know is that true manhood, biblical manhood, isn't necessarily about any of those things. It's not even about age. Because have you ever met a 45-year-old boy? I have. Have you ever met a 17-year-old man? I have. Biblical manhood, it's not about age, it's about a mentality. It's about a mindset. Because in the world that we live in, we are truly living in a manhood crisis. Did you know this, that almost 33% of children in America are living in homes without the presence of their biological father? The children in female-headed families are four times more likely to live in poverty, repeat a grade, have emotional problems, struggle with depression, and be obese. And I don't know if you know this, but the, the one thing that prison inmates all share in common, believe it or not, it's not their age, it's not their race, it's not even their socioeconomic background. The one thing that all prison inmates all share in common is that they did not have a father in the home growing up. Now time out for a second. If you're a stay-at-home mom, if you're a single mom, praise the Lord that we have a heavenly father. And one of the gifts that our Heavenly Father has given us is the extended family of our spiritual church family where we have other great male influences for us and for our children. Let me tell you this, I have a biological father and my father is great. My father is amazing. But I am who I am today, not only because of my father, but because of all the amazing examples of manhood that I find around me in the church today. See, here's the thing. I think we are living in a culture today, the first culture ever in human history that has actively discouraged a conversation about what does manhood require of me? What does manhood require of you? How do you even define what manhood is really all about? Because you cannot defeat that which you cannot 
define. So let's go ahead and, and look at Scripture and see what it is that Scripture has to say. 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verses 13 through 14, it says this right here. The, the Apostle Paul is saying this. He's saying, be watchful, stand firm in the faith. I want you to say this with me right now. Come on, act like men. I want you to say that with me one more time. Here we go. Act like men. Look at the person next to you and say this out loud. Here we go. Act like men. And then he goes on to define manhood in two different ways. And he says this, be strong. Men are strong. But then he gives us another attribute. And he says that I want you just to be a bulldozer. I don't want you to be a bull in a china shop. But he goes on to say this right here. Let all that you do be done in love. Let me tell you a little bit about the letter of 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians, what you're going to find is that it's written to the church in the city of Corinth, and it's actually a response letter because the church had written all sorts of questions to the Apostle Paul, and he's responding now to their questions. We don't have that list of questions, but we do have the Apostle Paul's response. And part of the reason why the church in Corinth had so many questions is not only because Christianity was so new and it was so different, and it was so countercultural. But part of the reason why they had so many questions is because it was the city of Corinth. And you're like, wait, I don't get it. See, the city of Corinth was a port city. And wherever, wherever you have a port city, you have sailors. Now, I know that our American servicemen, they act with dignity and they act with honor. But back then, if you were a sailor, sailors have been known to, uh, I don't know, get in a little bit of mischief. Like, for example, you never hear the phrase, you know what, oh, your, your boy, he's such a perfect little sailor. You never hear this, man, you are as pure as a sailor. You know what you hear? You hear, boy, that guy is drunk as a, say it with me, a sailor. Oh, my grandmama, she swears like a sailor, right? Here you are in the middle of this port city, and they have all sorts of temples that are devoted to the worship of these gods and goddesses. And some of these temples, they are doing things that are extremely, extremely, extremely inappropriate. And so as you might imagine, maybe in some of those places, it wasn't too hard to get men to come to church for some reason. But the Apostle Paul, what he's doing in these couple verses is he understands that in the city of Corinth that they had a whole bunch of men acting like a whole bunch of boys. And it's in the middle of this culture, and it's in the middle of this verse that he uses this phrase right here. Act like men. I love that. And I'm surprised that he doesn't say, you know, here's what I want you to do, guys. I want you to act your age. W would you grow up? Would you be a little bit more mature? He doesn't say that. He doesn't say, you know what? I want you to act like a responsible citizen. He doesn't say that either. He doesn't even say, could you act like Christians or Christ followers? He doesn't say that. He says this, that I want you to act like men. And there's so much about manhood, and there's so much in that verse that we can unpack. But there's one principle that I really want to drive home today. The one principle that I really want to talk about, and that's this principle right here. Are you ready for it? That boys live for today, but men think long term. Boys live for today, but men think long term. What does the verse say? Let's go back to the verse. It says this, be watchful. Stand firm in the faith. Act like men. In other words, he's saying this, have a vision. Stick with a vision. Don't go off and be tempted by the newest, shiniest thing. You need to be watchful. Stand firm in the faith. Act like men. All throughout the Bible, what you're going to find is that over and over and over, the Bible is encouraging us not to simply live for today, 
but always to live with an eye on eternity. It says this in Proverbs chapter 29, verse 18, in the King James Version, we're going old school right now, it's saying, where there is no vision, the people perish. I want you to think about the first Chinese prophet for a second. His name is Ni Hao Maya, or some people call him Nehemiah, okay? What you will find is that Nehemiah was a manly man. So when I think about Nehemiah, I think about Rocky. Yay! <laughs> you're going to edit that part out, right? Hey! No? You're not going to? Uh, okay, okay. Or I, th I think of, I think of Marlon Brando. Hey, hey, uh, he's a, he's a, okay, I should stop with these impressions. I'm really, really bad. Okay? But, uh, um, Nehemiah was a, 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 a manly man. That Nehemiah wasn't interested in just sitting around and playing video games or snapping into a slim gym. That Nehemiah, that he was busy building the protective walls around the city of Jerusalem. You gotta understand that the protective walls, this was a source of national pride. That if they didn't have the walls, they didn't have the temple, they didn't have protection of the city, they couldn't make sacrifices, they couldn't worship God. And so all of a sudden he's busy uh, rebuilding these walls when all of these critics start coming. Of course, when, men, whenever you do something big, what's going to happen is you're going to attract critics. And there were all these critics coming from all around saying that he was doing nothing good. You're wasting your time. That thing looks stupid. In, in other words, he was doing all the building and they were doing all the criticizing. He was the one who was wearing the sweat-stained clothes.